I'm going to get right into it. So, to talk to us now this evening, Sir David Attenborough, ladies and gentlemen. How lovely to see you again, and thank you so much. It's always a thrill for me when you come on the show and agree to be interviewed. So thank you so much. Um, you're just back, am I right? You're just back from China, just recently returned from China. China, yeah. And been filming out there, or is this a, filming, a holiday? Yeah. Okay. What, 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 what series is this? For? Fossils. Uh -huh. Feathered dinosaurs. Wow. Yeah, wonderful. Because the birds, I believe, they have more in common with dinosaurs than most of the other animals. They are they? descendants of dinosaurs. I, I don't believe that. I'll be honest with you. Get off. Well, I've seen, <laughs> you've seen dinosaurs in films, and they're, they're much bigger for you a start. You've been chased by an ostrich. Um, actually, you know what? I have. There you are. Then you believe it. So, did dinosaurs have feathered? Absolutely. Bone? All of them, even like the T. Not all of them. Not all of them. The big brontosaurs didn't. Wow. But the smaller ones did. And you've got these wonderful fossils in which you see, if you saw just the bones, you would say that's a dinosaur. And, but they've now got specimens in which you can see the imprint of the feathers all around. And is this a new interest of yours, the whole idea of uh, fossils and tracing animals back that far? No, You've always been no into it was actually one of my first, really. I was brought up in the Midlands and uh, I looked for fossils as a kid and I've never stopped, really. And do you, did you have a fossil collection when you were a young man? Uh, I have a few. Okay. A few, a few legal ones. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you smoked all the West, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so this is for another TV series. Um, yeah. What a productive period this has been for you, because there are three shows that have been on at the moment, or two are still on. I'm afraid so, yeah. Uh, and two more coming this year, is that yes, right? Yes, that's right. Wow, incredible. I mean, that's a remarkable workload for well... anyone. Well... But... <laughs> <laughs> When the offers are there, you have to take them, don't uh, you? Tell me about it. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, uh, the one we have on the moment, Africa, we see there, you're doing the one in China with fossils. Mm. What, what's the other show that you're making this year, the one that you haven't filmed yet, or that we haven't seen yet? There's um, one about fossils, as you say, and there's one about insects, which I'm doing. OK, and where are you filming that? All over the world? All or? over the world, well, yeah. uh, And what uh, sort of new angle will you take on insects? Yeah, well, that's in 3D. Uh, I don't know if you know this, you probably don't, but Sir David Attenborough is, I think, the only person to have won, won a BAFTA in uh, the black and white television category back in the days when it was all black and white in color he's also on a BAFTA for a high definition program and a 3d television program <laughs> and I think that shows the span of your career and the quality of your output which your faculty feels so good so insects in 3d and yet you're I mean I guess you're an animal uh, would you call yourself an animal lover or is it just a, a I'm, an academic I'm interest fascinated by animals that's right I mean the word lover is a sort of you know a funny old word uh, I, I, well, it is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I don't love I don't love snails particularly, no. but but they are very interesting. Actually, They're have you ever seen snails mating? I, you know what? I, well, <laughs> I, I've probably seen them on one of your shows yes. doing that kind of thing. But slugs I are even more exciting. I saw one creature. Come... <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, I'm a bit worried about the level of enthusiasm you're showing for the mating habits. <laughs> uh, but when you're filming. Do you get to see that firsthand, that kind of thing, or is it always you see what the cameraman's brought back? Oh, nearly always it's what the cameraman's done. I mean, I sometimes have the privilege of writing the, writing the scripts, you know, and I say, uh, you know, close up, uh, lion, as it approaches something rather, you see. Yeah. And they say, how do you expect to get that? And I say, that's your problem, mate. <laughs> uh, they do get some incredible shots. Oh, and I'm a... The cameraman of the heroes. Yeah. I'm amazed that um, even now, you know, you think about the amount of uh, footage that uh, Sir David has introduced to us, you're still finding new things, you're still capturing new things on film, aren't you? Tell yeah. us some of the new discoveries that you've made or your team have made for you to present. Oh, well, they discovered a, um, a, well, I say they discovered, but, but they learned about a wonderful place in, in Africa that should be nameless, where rhinos assemble in, in six, eight, ten pairs. I mean, just wonderful, and in the moonlight. Wow, I wouldn't have known that. Um, how difficult is it, you know, you mentioned the, the bravery and certainly the dedication of the cameraman you work with. Um, how risky is it? what they're doing. I mean, presumably sometimes they are in very real danger. For me, hardly at all. <laughs> but for... Um, but the cameramen... They, well, they've got to start with, they've got a camera, you know. Uh, and that's quite... And, and the funny thing is, when you're looking down a camera, you get absorbed in the programme and you forget... You will see, you will see, and you forget that it's going on yeah. down there. And even when it starts to run towards you, you think, this is a terrific shot. Yeah. And you suddenly really look up and it's only just about <laughs> five yards away. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, no, they, they, they are the heroes. I mean, amazing. And in the new, uh, I saw uh, the, the episode of Africa, the, the first one I saw was in the Congo, in the rainforest in Congo, and I saw that there was a scene, your cameraman almost got knocked out of a tree by an elephant. Yes, yeah. At night, didn't he? Well, they're very bright animals, very clever animals, uh, and, the ele and the elephant knew he was up there. Uh, and didn't like it. Do you know what he didn't like about it? Is it just because he was in his territory? He just didn't like it. I mean, elephants, elephants are like that. They've, they've got very different personalities. Uh, very, they can be very cranky. I mean, um, the last programme that's coming up, which is about conservation, is shot on the slopes of Mount Kenya. And the elephants, since time immemorial, used to graze on the, on the, down in the lowlands and then in the summer they would go up into the highlands and the, on the higher slopes of Mount Kenya. And then a few years ago they built a big road right across their track in which lorries were going. And the elephants were causing terrible trouble. I mean, some were killed and so on. So one or two conservationists said, why don't we build a tunnel going under the road? And others said, no, it never worked. But they built it. And all the elephants, within like a fortnight, learnt to go under through, wow. the, through the tunnel, except one cranky old bull. And you could see him, you know, he said, I'm bugging if I'm going up. <laughs> <laughs> and so he, he stayed down there, knocking down the plants as plantations. So he just refused I mean, that's, to... That's typical of elephants. They're very different characters. Bloody-minded. Yeah, bloody-minded. Uh, well, like humans, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. And that brings me to a, a different question, because occasionally people obviously ask you questions about the state of the planet and your, whether you believe in climate change, whether you believe that that's happening, whether you believe that the preservation of animals is necessary, whether you let them fend for themselves. Would you save humans over other animals? Do you think the planet would be better off without us? If we behave better, we're capable of behaving better than we're doing at the moment. We aren't fully aware of the consequences of what we're doing most of the time. Uh, and if we behave better, we have the power to make everything better for everything else, which is more than you can say for almost any other species. So we have the potential of making things much better. At the moment, we're making them much worse. So it's time we wised up. It's time we took responsibility for our action. Yeah. I, think that's, I don't think anyone would disagree with that, and it's lovely to hear it from you. Um, David's new series at the moment, or one of the new series, but the one that's just started, is called uh, David Attenborough's Natural Curiosities. It's on Tuesdays on the Eden Channel. I saw the first episode the other night. Yeah. Uh, a fabulous. And, and this is a first for you, in a way, as well, isn't it? It's the first time you've shot a series entirely yeah, in the UK. It's, 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 a nice, it's a nice mixture, really, because it not only talks about animals, but it talks about the history of animals, the discovery of animals, the romance of animals, how animals work. And, Focused on particular species. Yeah, uh, chameleons. Okay. And chameleons, I, I mean, I love lizards generally, but chameleons fascinate me because, you know, you grow up thinking about them changing their colour, but of course there is so much truth in it. It's not some sort of myth. They actually do change, don't they? Oh, yeah. OK, I've got something under my desk for you. Look at this little fella here. <laughs> Let me pass them over to you. And they're arboreal, so they like to be high, don't they? So I think if I go down low and you put your finger there... Look at that, and you've, you've handled these little fellas before, of course. I love the way their hands work. They're kind of like... It's almost like they have two big they fingers. They are but... among the most beautiful things in the world. Look at that. Look at this climbing up onto you there. Come on. Look at that. Look at that. And they change their colour when threatened, or indeed when they wish to threaten, when they want to impose their will on another animal. No, they, they get angry. If they get angry, they go black. This chap's not in the least angry. And he's a, isn't he just one of the most beautiful things? Look at that. Come on, then. Do you want to travel? Oh, I've got a little tiny fella here. Look at this one here. And so they, they like to be high, is that right? So if you put him on my shoulder, he'll probably, he'll probably like that, I think. And also he makes for... Oh, no, hold it, he's... <laughs> Why, he's defying nature, this beast. <laughs> I think we found it. Look at that. Look at his little... Wow. And they don't cohabitate happily, do they? I believe they like to be on their own, if they're... They, uh, yeah, th they are solitary hunters, by and large. And, of course, the great thing about them is that they have this fantastic... <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a tame one and I used to take him out in the garden in London and uh, it had this huge tongue of course and I used, to, I used to point him at a fly sitting on a flower and he'd go <laughs> see, and wallop get the fly wow. we should say I mean people I mean I'm falling in love with this little fella here I don't think the feeling's mutual but 
we should point out that they don't make suitable pets, and these are from a rescue centre. So I think people had them as pets, and they were taken in, and they've been looked after now. They were born in this country, though. That's the great thing about these. Their eyes, I believe, are they unique in that their eyes can face in different directions they at do. the same time? And what's more, they have an extraordinary brain, so that it flicks in a matter of microseconds from one eye to the other eye. So it builds up a, a double picture. So it's looking, can be looking up and looking wow. down at the same time. He's given me uh, what we call the stink eye, this one over here. <laughs> well, will you join me in saying thank you, not just to our two chameleon friends, but also the one and only Sir David Attenborough. <laughs>